I'm Andrew Dickinson, author of Year Two, and you're listening to The Sega Lounge. Welcome to the Sega Lounge, where we celebrate our love for all things Sega, including the games, the music, and the community. I'm your host, KC. Join me as I talk to different guests and learn more about their projects and passion for Sega. Welcome back to the Sega Lounge, my good people. Earlier this week, on the 29th of May to be precise, this show celebrated nine years of existence. It's been a crazy ride with tens of different guests and crazy challenges. While I've been doing this for nine years, several people have helped or collaborated with me throughout the run of the show. Big shout out to my original partner in crime, Donny. Obviously to the team over at Radio Sega, current and past for their support, our good friends Steve, aka OSC, and Manuel, aka Kopke, for their contributions to the sounds and sights of the lounge, And speaking of Radio Sega, as we keep premiering our episodes every week on their airwaves, a big shout out to Resident SD, who is usually responsible for making it happen. But most of all, the biggest of shout outs go to our amazing guests and our brilliant listeners. So to you, dear listener, happy 9th anniversary of the Sega Lounge. It's been an amazing 9 years all about Sega, and I can't wait for you to listen to what's still to come. Well then, let's change gears and... Dream on with this week's guest. This week, I'm joined once more by Andrew Dickinson, author of Dreamcast Year 2. Last time he was on the show, he was a few days away from launching the Kickstarter campaign for the second book in the Dreamcast Year series. The campaign was a hit, and now that backers are getting their books, I thought it made sense for Andrew to return and tell us how it all went down. And of course, there's a new challenge for him to tackle. Why people agree to return to this show is beyond me. If you want to know a bit more about Andrew's background as a gamer and a Sega and Dreamcast fan, feel free to pause this and go back to episode 122. As I didn't want to repeat all the same questions and tire poor Andrew out, we didn't go into much detail on what exactly the Dreamcast Years project is, so again, go back to episode 122 for context. Pro tip, just type thesegalounge.com slash 122 on your browser and you'll get there. Everyone, here's Andrew Dickinson. Hello, Andrew Dickinson. Welcome to, Welcome back to the Sega Lounge. Thank you very much. Good to How be back. How are you, my friend? Yeah. I'm good. I'm good, thank you. Busy, 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 but good. Excellent. It's so nice to have you back on the show. Um, yes. Especially since, and I like to do this when I can, uh, we, we we had you for the, the Kickstarter of mm-hmm. Year 2, Dreamcast Year 2. We'll, we'll talk about that. And now we are, uh, you are back to tell us that ever, everything went smoothly uh, no problems at all, and th- people are getting the book. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that, that last part at least, right? People yeah. are getting the book. People are getting the book. It, I, I mean, it went it went as smoothly as a lot of Kickstarters go, in, w- <laughs> in which it it didn't go all that smoothly, but it all worked out fine in the end, and that's all that matters. <laughs> that's true. That's true. With with a pandemic, uh, uh, yeah, all sorts know, of stuff happening, yeah. helping. A lot, I, I, I bet. Yeah, but we'll we'll talk a little bit about that, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. But uh, Andrew, so people who want to know more about you can can listen back to the the previous episode, and mm-hmm. you are more than uh, well known in the community. But uh, very briefly, so what was the genesis of the idea for for Dreamcast, the Dreamcast year, a series of books? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it all started when I think this is back in, I feel like it was 2018 now, which I now refer to as the before times. And um, it was <laughs> a long old time ago. Uh, and it was a guy called Sandy Bry, who um, some of your listeners may also know of. And he wrote a, a book called uh, 
PlayStation Vita year one, uh, and then followed that up with several of the books. And I saw that I saw the book that he was doing, and I thought, hey, that would be in- that would be an incredible fit for the story of the Dreamcast because it very much fits that yearly kind of rundown and it only has a few years so it kind of uh, it would be a really nice way to tell the story of the Dreamcast I have been kind of involved in the Dreamcast community in one way or another for pretty much since uh, the Dreamcast was out kind of I I wrote for a Dreamcast fan site when I was 16 called Dreamcast Source Uh, I've loved the console ever since and I've always wanted to do something else relating to it so I kind of jumped to the chance I spoke to Sandeep uh, and he was really happy for me to kind of use that format to run and do my own book. Um, so I did that, launched a Kickstarter in 20, I think it was 2019. Um, and then uh, kind of launched the first book at the beginning of 2020. I think it shipped February 2020. And of course, we all know what happened in March 2020. Um, and uh, and then for some I reason, no I have no idea very... what you mean. <laughs> no, no. Uh, and I very foolishly then decided um, a couple of months later to run a Kickstarter for the sequel um, during a pandemic, which, you know, actually went really well. Um, but unfortunately, uh, we all know what happened in the following two years. And uh, and yeah, and that and other other personal stuff happened and just uh, made it all very uh, difficult to uh, to do. But yeah, the, that was the genesis of the idea, essentially, was, yeah, just uh, wanting to do something for the Dreamcast community, for this console I loved and have this, his- this history book uh, to tell the story of the Dreamcast, especially from a PAL perspective, because PAL often gets left behind. It's always the Americans, it's always the Japanese, but nobody ever looks at the European side of things. So I definitely wanted to have a look at that too. Poor us, yes. I know. Okay. You usually, and, and you're obviously all also connected to the Dreamcast Junkyard mm-hmm. uh, and other other projects. Uh, we'll we'll talk about other other projects uh, at mo- more to the end of this interview because good things happened during yeah. the pandemic as well, right? Yeah, it wasn't all yes. bad. <laughs> it wasn't all bad. So yeah. we'll talk about that. But you usually start whenever you host uh, the Dreamcast, the Dream Pod. Mm-hmm. Uh, you started with a different question, so yeah. I, I, I thought I, I'd, I'd do that as well. Okay. Favorite ice cream flavor, Andrew? Oh, okay. That's an interesting one. I'm trying to think now. I, so I, it's changed a lot over the years because I, yeah, I just, I, my taste changed. I used to love mint choc chip, which is a very divisive ice cream flavor. Not many people are that keen on it. Um, Oh, I think I do enjoy that. Yeah, yeah it's, it's nice. Great. It's refreshing. Yeah, the mint taste is nice and refreshing. Mm-hmm. Um, I think nowadays I would probably go for cookie dough. I love a cookie dough mm-hmm. ice cream. I think that's really, really good. If you're going to go for a simple flavor, probably strawberry. But like, if you want, if you want bits and things in it, then cookie dough is always a good choice. Nice. Mm-hmm. I feel like you can't beat uh, like a, a combination of sweet and uh, refreshing. Not mm. sour, but refreshing. So I usually do something like. Uh, I don't know, like something sweet like caramel or something. Mm-hmm. And then lemon, which hmm. Interesting. doesn't really connect, I think, for most people. It doesn't really mix well. But I, it, it, for me, it's great because it's the sweet and the refreshing. Yeah. And I mean, a little bit good. sour as well. But yeah. Yeah. It's nice. So... Obviously, the, the important Sega question is to, seg- to I mean, start us off here. Yeah, the I'm, Lodge. you say say your question. I'm trying to think if there's a blue ice cream now. Is there a blue ice cream? There, there is a Sonic ice cream. Right? Is there the one with the the crooked eyes? Oh god, yeah, I've seen that as yes. well. Yeah, never had it, never tried it. But I mean, it doesn't look appealing, does it? To be honest, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> it looks like like a very like a, an abomination. Actually. It does. What, yeah. what happened to the eyes? I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> maybe maybe just stick with like bubblegum ice cream because bubblegum is generally blue. When you have like a bubblegum flavor, it's blue. So let's just pretend that's the Sega flavor. Yeah. Just bubblegum. Yeah. It's fine. Now that I think about it, aren't the eyes two bubblegums? I think so, yeah. Two pieces of bubblegum? Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. Okay. So back on track. <laughs> yes. Now that we have that very important question out of the way. Mm-hmm. Um, so obviously the, the Kickstarter was a, a success. Mm-hmm. So you were last time you were here, you were still... It's, it was still going on. Um, I think you hadn't even launched the project okay. when you when you came on the show. I'm not really sure right now. Uh, so it was a success. Mm-hmm. Tell us a little bit about, and this is important for people who just sometimes complain 
Right. And I know that happened a lot with you as well. It did. Uh, yeah. You were, you candidly shared a lot of that experience with, with the uh, people who backed the, the project, mm -hmm. but what happened? What obstacles, what challenges um, did you have to, to, uh, you know, face to mm -hmm. get this book ready and done and, uh, you know, on people's doorsteps. Yeah, I mean, there was there was a bunch. Um, <laughs> I mean, we've already touched on the pandemic, and that was it. The pandemic for me, I thought when I started the project, I thought, hey, I'm at home all the time. I don't have anything else to do. This is going to be great for productivity. I'm going to be able to get loads done. And actually, the reverse happened, and being stuck at home and everything going on, and the worry and the and and like death counts on a daily basis like i don't really want to sit here doing this like it just kind of put me into a weird mood um and it was just a weird time so that obviously had an effect and i think that affected everybody i mean there's probably some people out there who were very productive during the pandemic but i was definitely not part of that set of people um i i tried my hardest but yeah um but also um i happened to get a new job during the pandemic um so i i mean i to be i i got my job before this one literally in the march just as the pandemic started um i got a job with like a um kind of a, a customer service type thing so i was working from home throughout the pandemic never having met any of my co-workers which was very interesting um which is when i started the campaign yeah. um but as that went on um and we kind of rolled into 2021 um I think it was 2021. My 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 t time means nothing it's, now. So. It's really really hard to to <laughs> to pin it all down. Yes yeah. yes. Um, but it was uh, basically uh, one of my friends, uh, John Doyle, uh, kind of launched his own Kickstarter campaign, which was for uh, the Lock On Gaming Journal. And originally, I was approached by him to kind of write a piece for it and a little bit of advice about running Kickstarters because I'd run a couple already. Um, and that kind of over time transpired into me then taking on a role on the project. Um, and the role quickly got bigger. Uh, my job title changed multiple times um, during my time. My Well, even in the first year, my job title, I think, changed three times. Um but then I was kind of uh, essentially just working for them alongside my main job. Um, so I was working seven days a week, which was fun, um, and helped launch the second and third campaign for Lock On, the gaming journal. And eventually, uh, last year, I became full time there. So um, I now work full time for Lost in Cult, who are the makers of Lock On. Um, so that took a lot out of my ability to do other things especially when i was working essentially two jobs so you know i was working mm -hmm. my day job to actually make money and then on the side doing stuff with lost in cult for not really any money um just to help them get off the ground um and yeah that took a lot of my time so those two things were probably the biggest and of course the other thing was um it's a team it's a kind of a group project it's not just me in year two there's a lot of other contributors um and so trying to they're all fantastic people really great but there's so many uh, different people to chase for different things um and obviously everybody has their own stuff going on and it's you know it's a passion project it's not a, it wasn't ever a project for profit so yeah. you know it's uh, it's kind of kind of balancing that fine line between wanting to get the product the project done um but also respecting people's time and and stuff that's going on in their lives as well uh, and not wanting to kind of make it a uh yeah, make it too much hard work for them. So yeah, there was a there was a combination of all sorts of things that really just brought it into this uh, very long, uh, <laughs> very long um, <laughs> process. And yeah, it did in in the end. I think from the beginning of the Kickstarter until I started shipping was three years. So it's uh, it's a long old time. Um, yeah, but I'm glad I got it done in the end. I think um, exactly like I said, there was a few people who maybe were not so sure that I would do it and that it was all a bit of a, a bit a bit of a scam which would be stupid of me because I've already produced one book why would I why would I go through the whole process of making one book <laughs> just to then pretend to make a second book it was just silly um but it's, it's or it's a, or or a master plan mm. cuz you know people now trust you yeah. and then you scam them during the second one so <laughs> you go. that's genius that's genius it would be genius but to be <laughs> fair i didn't make enough from that in order to like live <laughs> like it would be <laughs> i'd probably be able to live a life of luxury for like a year and then i'd be like <laughs> it just wouldn't, wouldn't really help so uh but yeah it's yeah. it's eventually got there and mm. 
you know, all sorts of stuff happened. All sorts of stuff happened in the meantime as well, like Brexit. Brexit happened. Mm-hmm. Um, so all sorts of weird things that I didn't expect to have to deal with because I thought that I would finish it before all this stuff happened and in fact i didn't so yeah yeah, lots of uh weird um trials and tribulations to get through but uh, yeah got there in the end that's the the most important thing yeah Yeah. and and i think that's important because uh you said you got the same or most of the same challenges that most kickstarter projects do Mm -hmm. but it's important to make a distinction between the ones that get there in the end yeah and the ones that don't that are still a significant amount of them don't get made and people yeah sometimes they got burnt by Mm -hmm. uh the odd project that didn't uh you know people didn't keep their promises or whatever and there's always this level of like you know mistrust here and there and yeah and Which is totally understandable. Yeah. Especially in the Sega community, there's been a bunch of projects, especially Dreamcast related as well, that just material <laughs> didn't materialize at all. Mm-hmm. Um, one very famous example, which I, I won't mention, um, but people who are listening will probably know what it is. Um, but yeah, there, there's a bunch. And I can I can totally understand that people would be um trepidatious is that the right word they 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 they, they, they'd be trepidatious about about that i don't even know trepidatious having trepidation is a word but trepidatious i don't know if i'm just making that up um but they would feel that sense of trepidation because um you know other projects haven't come to fruition and three years is an awfully long time to take to make a project um which i absolutely understand um but yeah I've, i've tried my hardest to keep positive as much as possible um, but yeah, some of the uh, some of the negativity rubbed off for sure. Um, certainly didn't didn't help. Um, but also, yeah. I understand why people would be negative. It's everybody's different. Everybody takes things different ways. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, for yeah, sure, for sure, yeah. But that's let's not talk about that anymore. So no. the the important thing is that it's it's done. Yes, uh, and people are actually getting their yeah. their rewards. Um, yeah. You mentioned a lot of you know talented people that contributed to to this project mm-hmm. do so some of them are people who have been on the show before some people mm-hmm. who have collaborated on um on in the dreamcast junkyard yeah scene as well uh how was it to get all these people together and um how hands-on did you have to be to to get things ready and done and in the way that fit the 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 format that you were Mm. going for so i mean yeah it was it was interesting most of the people from the first book came back in some capacity um for some part of it Uh, some people didn't or or kind of you know because it took so long they ended up dropping out part way through which is totally understandable it was a long project um but the vast majority came back and then because since the first book launched, I joined the Dreamcast Junkyard, um, which I, I wasn't a part of before. Uh, and um, Tom Charnock, who is no longer heading up the Dreamcast Junkyard, he's taken a bit of a step back, um, as we've mentioned fairly recently on the podcast and uh, in articles and stuff. Uh, he's taken a step back. But at the time, obviously, he was very impressed with the first book. And when I started talking about doing a second book, I was like, you know, I'd really like to do it in conjunction with the Dreamcast Junkyard because you know, it's the biggest Dreamcast fan site on on the web. You've got all these people who have so much knowledge. Um, so he was really happy to do that. And of course, now the the book bears the logo of uh, the Dreamcast Junkyard on the back and the reprint of the first book has it as well. So essentially, everybody from the Dreamcast Junkyard who works on the blog or the pod um, had a part to play, um, either, you know, writing a small part, writing a larger section, um, people like Lewis, Lewis Cox, who is now kind of taken over the day to day running of, um, of Dreamcast Junkyard. He, um, essentially edited it with me. Uh, he did a huge amount of editing work at the end, which was incredible. Uh, so yeah, there was a lot of Dreamcast Junkyard people and then just other people from around the web. So people like Retro Faith, who is, uh, who's awesome. She's lovely um and a couple of other people as well like dreamcast hub and you know just a ton of people but i mean in terms of <laughs> wrangling them all together and and uh, and how involved i was with that is i mean it, although it's a team project and there's a ton of people in there you know it's my my project first and foremost uh, it has my name on it uh so i obviously wanted to make sure i was involved as possible so literally i did and organized everything 
Um, so I was making, you know, I was speaking to everybody, making sure they got their pieces in, reviewing stuff with them, asking them questions if I needed to change things. Um, I worked very closely with Steve Novakovich Stone, who is the uh, the art director who basically created the design for the book and put it all together. Uh, worked closely with Dan Tiller, who is the artist as well, uh, to make sure all the art was kind of to what I wanted it to be. Um, and yeah, it was it was it was challenging at times because. Um, yeah, there were. There's a lot going on, especially in the design front. Trying to put a nearly 200 page book together uh, and get all the design right and everything done, all the editing that goes into it, it's just incredibly difficult. Um, but we came out with something really incredible and some really surprising pieces, um, like stuff that um, James Harvey wrote about Spirit of Speed, which is mm. nobody's favorite game except for his. <laughs> um, but it was a really interesting. It's a really interesting feature that looks at it in, you know, it it doesn't it doesn't gush about it. It doesn't pretend that it's not um, a, a, a pretty crappy game, but it does. <gasps> How uh, dare you? Know, James will kill me, but it does. It, <laughs> you know, he looks at what the positives are because there are positives to that. And, you know, people made that game at the end of the day. And he does speak to one of the people who made that game. Um, mm. and, you know, maybe why some things went a bit wrong, uh, mm. with that. So yeah, it was, it was a really, it was a really interesting experience and a difficult one. Um, but I think, yeah, it was. I don't know what else to say about that. It was. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, <laughs> I get it. I get it. Yeah. So, but a massive undertaking. Mm, exactly. Obviously, obviously, uh, and I, I, some of the features are really, as you were saying, really interesting. I liked uh, Brian Vines's uh, feature Beyond mm. Saturn. Yes. Right. Uh, Brian's been on the show more than once. Mm. Uh, in the past, is part of the the Saturn junkyard as well, not just yes. the Dreamcast. And ha- so h- this this look at the Dreamcast from uh, the perspective of uh, the successor of the Saturn, right? What yeah. s- what followed the Sega Saturn was was interesting mm. uh, as well. So people will enjoy that for sure. I yeah. I know. What was your favorite? I know this is a, an unfair question, but what what is what is your favorite part of this book? Oh. Um... That is tough. I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot to it. Um, or, or maybe uh, let me help you okay. there. Not the favorite, because I know that's unfair. But if you could, like, if you were like doing selling this book to a person who never before heard of it, mm-hmm. what would be the 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 feature that you would be like? This is the the one that you really should start with, Ooh. and will convince you to buy the book. That's tough as well, because I I mean. <laughs> <laughs> is it the same thing? Maybe. Well, it's yeah. I mean, is it, it kind worse? Of is. It kind know. of is. Um, <laughs> but it's. I mean, it's difficult because I think that. I mean, it's split into sections, right? So there are different sections, and I think each section kind of complements the other. I think. I think if I was to look at it from an outside perspective, and what people have told me, I think the vast majority of people really enjoy the retrospectives. So I think they really like reading about the games and different people's opinions and thoughts on those games. Um. And this time we've had stuff like, you know, uh, Tom had a bunch of Metropolis Street Racer stuff that he's had yes. for a long time. Some like, I was going to mention that. Yes. Yeah, which he really, which was great mm-hmm. to have in there. But obviously, we had the James Harvey stuff, which was, you know, really a, an interesting. He was very dead set on having this Monza track guide in there. So we we had we put that in there. And, and his whole thing, the reason he had a 10 page Spirit of Speed piece was that um and i can't remember exactly how it went down now because it was three years ago but i think that there was i was doing like a stream to celebrate the launch of the campaign i believe and i was streaming code veronica and there was some kind of bet made within the stream that if i got to a certain viewer number or something i think it was that i would let james have a 10 page um feature on spirit (laughs) of speed and obviously it (laughs) happened so i was stuck by my word and i gave him a 10 page feature on spirit of speed um but yeah, the I think the the retrospectives are it, that's a very large part of the book because there are just so many games during year two. But I think that they work; it works really well together with like the story of that year, uh, the interviews. There's some great interviews, and I think that the library section as well is something that's fairly unique and that it kind of gathers all of those PAL releases in kind of release date order. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it works as a whole. But I think yeah, the the retrospectives. I think, oh, and of course, there's the features because that was a new thing for year two is have, having those different features from different people about different aspects of the console. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, maybe the retro, maybe, maybe I'd start with the retrospectives if I was selling to people and then go into all of the other stuff. <laughs> 
Okay, okay, makes sense, makes sense. I, I, I am glad that you mentioned the the Metropolis Street Racer one because mm. I, I'm a big fan of of the game. Yes, uh, there's game. also one about Shenmue. Well, yeah, there That's had to be one, one of yours. About, yeah, yeah, well, there had to be one about. I mean, if you didn't cover Shenmue in the year that Shenmue <laughs> came out, I think people would riot. I mean, Shenmue <laughs> Dojo would probably be knocking on my door and demanding to know where that was. Um, but yeah, the I mean, that's, it's, men it's, yeah. would come to your door. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and Co- and Code Veronica, of course, which is mm-hmm. another one of my favorites. So you know, and and those had um, some of the artwork that was done by Dan as well, which which is great. So yeah, 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 yeah. and it's it's got a distinct look, yes. very distinct look and feel that which which I love. Yeah, that the art style is is awesome. Yeah, yeah. So. There was I remember when the campaign launched and people saw the uh, the cover, and obviously it's kind of a, a paint splatter effect. Yeah, and the Dreamcast is off white, so there's a lot of off white splatter, uh, and there was some there were some comments made that were fairly rude as to what that might be. It is paint splatter. It is nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's. I, I think it's a nice style. I mean, again, I worked closely with. I <laughs> worked closely with Dan. <laughs> I I just realized. Yes. Uh, yeah. Never really thought of that before. No, some yeah, people just have really mean, dirty minds. Yeah, obviously. Of um, <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, me and Dan worked really close. I had like a, a vision of as to how I wanted it to be, and he kind of, um, yeah, he he kind of executes that really well. I wanted like because you know the the first book was very clean the the art style was very clean and precise, um, mm-hmm. and I wanted something a bit messier to show how messy the second year was. It was yes. really colorful and bright and amazing, but it was also like you know the <laughs> end of the Dreamcast and like things were going wrong. So I wanted it to to have that kind of messy look to it, and also have the Dreamcast blue, the European Dreamcast blue, because mm-hmm. it was very orange last time. So yeah, 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 makes sense, makes sense. Okay, so. If uh, th- another deep question, mm. so and three years have passed since you were last on the show. Yeah. In 2023, in uh, May 2023, when we're recording this, what does the Dreamcast mean to you, Andrew? Hmm. And has it at all evolved or changed? I think, yeah, I mean... It, it's I don't know it's it's always and I think it will remain forever my favorite console and I think now that I've had the opportunity to write two books about it to join a team of people on the junkyard who love it as well as much sometimes more than I do um it, it's it's changed my perspective in that the community is way bigger than I ever thought it was so it's really it's been really nice to get to be a part of that community in some in some way um so i felt like i was kind of I, although i started off in a little dreamcast community when i was younger in the years between then and like 2018 i felt like i was off in the wilderness and i was one of the only people who liked the dreamcast and i'd bring it up to people in conversation and they were like oh yeah, i remember i remember playing those once and now it's like all i talk about is uh, people playing dreamcast it's like yeah. what i'm known for even at work even in, in my job today in fact we were going through stuff and we were looking at uh, various consoles and the dreamcast was in there and um oh, i think we were we were playing which uh, which um console would you get rid of out of each gen and we were going down and we got to the sixth gen and um, and people were going, oh, I'll get rid of the Dreamcast. And I was like, oh, and, uh. like, and somebody was like, you do know Andrew's here, right? And I was like, how <laughs> dare you? Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, it's one of those things that has informed, I think, my entire gaming life. And now it's kind of it's informed my career as well, because I've gotten to do these books. I also got to do a whole thing which um, we may talk about later possibly, but I got to do a whole thing in lock on about Dreamcast, which was incredible. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think that it still means a lot to me. I don't think what it means to me has changed, but how I'm able to express what it means to me has changed a lot um, since this all started. So now in May 2023, I think I'm just very lucky to be able to be able to express uh, how much I love that console and what it means and also give it, uh, yeah, just give it its dues. Um, mm-hmm. There's a lot of people doing that, of course, but I'm, I'm glad that I'm one of those people. So yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh, that's, that was a great answer. Great answer. <laughs> Thanks. June 1st, 2023 marks the launch of a new hub for the best video game music and entertainment podcasts. 
Terra Player is now live, and the Sega Lounge is proud to be one of the podcasts available at launch. With Terra Player, you get easy access to over 4,000 podcast episodes, and counting, as well as the best video game music courtesy of the 24-7 streams of Radio Sega and KNGI Network. Go to terraplayer.com and start listening on your computer, phone, or tablet. If you're in the UK, you can also access it on your Amazon Alexa-enabled device. Just say, Alexa, open Terra Player. Terra Player, the new place to hear the best video game music and entertainment podcasts live and on demand. Okay, so let's take a quick break from the deep conversation, mm. Andrew. Because mm-hmm. you know what's coming, right? Already? It's time. Already. Already. Okay. Already. okay. It's time for the Sega Lounge <laughs> Challenge, Andrew. Oh, no. Now that you know our guests, it's time to put them to the test. It's the moment we've waited for and the moment they dread. Welcome to your doom. I mean, welcome to the Sega Lounge Challenge. <laughs> <laughs> I was dreading this. <laughs> of, of course, it's the dreaded Sega Lodge Challenge. Mm-hmm. This time, I, I I I try to be fair. Okay. 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 Your your, I, your idea I'm of fair is maybe not fair. the same as mine. But okay. <laughs> I mean, so this time uh, we'll we'll I'll let you off easy with the 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 song related questions. Okay. Okay. I'll explain why in a bit, but it's the same sort of format. Mm-hmm. 10 rounds, some are questions, Mm -hmm. some are songs or lyrics. Mm -hmm. So, because we did that that last time. Yeah. Um, But for the songs or lyrics, you just need the game. Okay. And you'll get two points. Okay. Okay, so hmm, maybe, because you struggled with the songs last time. I did. I literally just, just scraped a victory, right? I just passed. Just... You know, but it's that's what matters in yeah. the end. It's, it's what matters. But the questions work the same way. So this time I'll let you uh, go wild with Sega, not mm-hmm. just the Dreamcast. Uh, we'll have some questions that are Dreamcast specific, yeah. but you can pick between easy and hard questions. Okay. Okay. As yeah. per usual, one point for easy, two point for hard. Mm-hmm. Two points for hard. So it's up to you. Ten points is what we're aiming for, as per usual. Mm-hmm. Do you think we can do it? Oh, I'm going to be confident and say yes, but we'll definitely. see how. Yeah, we'll see how that goes throughout. <laughs> no, 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 definitely okay. for sure. Yeah. I'm certain. Okay. Yeah. So, let's do this, Andrew Dickinson. Mm-hmm. Round one. Yes. Easy or hard question? Let's. I'm going to ease into it. Let's start with an easy one. Excellent. Okay. Let's go with a very easy one. Okay. Are you familiar with Outrun? Vaguely. <laughs> okay, I know. I think you know this. Okay. I Actually, I know you know this. In Outrun, what brand of cars do you drive? Ferrari. Are you sure? Uh, yeah, I think it's a Ferrari Spider. But um, yeah, it's a Ferrari for sure. So Ferrari mm-hmm. is the brand of cars. It's the brand of car, yeah. That you drive in Outrun. That you drive in Outrun, yeah. Stop stop delaying. Come on. <laughs> yes. Yes, Hooray. of course. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Yes. One point. Good Yay. job. One point. Okay. That was that was easy. So I feel smart. <laughs> see? That's it. One point already. Cool. So uh round two is a song. Okay. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to make this e- a little bit easier for you because mm-hmm. all the songs or lyrics or whatever we have here are Dreamcast songs or Dreamcast from Dim- Dreamcast games. And you okay. only need the game. Okay. So you don't need to tell me what the song is, where it plays. Never mind that. Two points okay. for a correct answer. Mm-hmm. Are you ready for the first song? Sure. Hit me. <sighs> Whew. Ten second long clip. Let's okay. go.
oh, I recognize it. I recognize it. It's really, oh, I, I totally recognize it. It's a platformer. And I feel like I want to say Sonic, but I also feel like I would be totally wrong. And I don't know if it's one or two. And I don't even know if it's Sonic. Um... <laughs> this is a roller coaster of emotions, this, this, this it's, answer. It's, oh, this, the, the answering process. Yeah. It's so recognizable. Like if when when you tell me what it is, even if I get it wrong, I will go, oh, of course it's that. Um, okay, I'm... Oh, well, what uh, does it sound like? What does it sound like? What kind of I don't know it give, genre it, or I don't know what it gi it gives it gives me all, all I'm getting is platformer vibes like it's okay. like the way it starts feels like the beginning of a platformer level and then you go off and then it kind of so I feel like I want to say platformer I feel like I feel like the only thing I've got in my head is Sonic Adventure and I feel like that's not the right answer but I don't know if I can i don't think i have any other answer in my head so we'll go with sonic adventure and i'll say sonic adventure one so you're saying sonic adventure one yeah i think it's wrong for this but, but that's what i'm saying <laughs> so my answer which i think is wrong yeah. is okay so final answer i have I no other answer in. so yes <laughs> okay andrew mm-hmm Why delay it? No. Of course it's not. No, 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 not. no, 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 no. It's, and I thought you would get this, Somebody Amigo. Of course it's Sam Why of did I know? Of course, it's the title it's screen. Bienvenidos oh. a Somebody Amigo. Of course it is. Okay. Now, now so I've got what, it. I'm what, bef the right before the clip starts, mm -hmm. they say Somebody Amigo, and then... Da -da 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 -da. So oh, well, I, at least uh, it's the right developer, at least. It, that's true. That's true. Yes. Yes. Okay. So no points in this round. No worries. We we still got one. Yeah. Only we only need nine more points. Okay. Round three. Yes. Easy or hard question, Andrew? I feel like to make up for that shocking <laughs> shocking answer, I'm gonna <laughs> need to do a hard one. See if I can get two. Okay. 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 I'll be honest, I don't know if we've done this one. I don't think so. So okay. let's let's do it. Last time, I don't think I don't think so. Alex Kidd. Oh God. Good start. Go on. Wait, wait. <laughs> Alex Kidd makes a cameo appearance in the Japanese exclusive Dreamcast game, Sega Gaga. Uh -huh. What is Alex's job in the game? I thought you were just going to ask me. <laughs> I thought the question was going to be: He makes an appearance in the game. What is the game? I was like, Sega Gaga, of course it's. Um, I'm pretty. Oh, so um, Lewis? No, it wasn't Lewis. Rich wrote a piece about this in Dreamcast Year Two. I'm pretty sure he mentions him. If I, if my memory serves me correctly, I think he runs the convenience store. Could be. I'm not saying yes or no. I'm just, yeah. Could I mean, you have to at some point. <laughs> I know, yeah. I'm just, I'm waiting for you to, is that your final answer? Is uh, that, are you sure? Completely sure. He runs, it, he run, he runs something. And, and while I do this, and while you do that, I'm, I'm scrolling through the, the di digital version of uh, the book to find. To see if it's there. Uh, to see if he mentioned it. It's either, it's either a convenience store or a cafeteria. And that's where I'm, and that's where I'm. It was like a little shop or something in the in the in the thing. So it's either a, ah, uh, that's where that's where I'm. That's where I'm if I say convenience Could store, be. it's going to be cafeteria. If I say cafeteria, it'll be convenience store. It's just the way it's going to go. I'm I'm going to stick with my first answer and say convenience. So store. it's a convenience cafeteria. Yeah, uh, I'll stick with my yeah. first answer. I think it's I think okay. it's a convenience store. If I get this wrong now, this will be awful. It's in my book for crying out loud. But um, I I know I'm pretty sure it's one of those. Okay, um, but yeah, it will be convenient. Okay. I'm gonna go with convenience store. Okay, so that's your final answer. It's locked in. Yeah, no going back. No. <laughs> Alex Kidd's job in Sega Gaga is he works in a store. Is oh. it a convenience store? Okay. It is not. Oh. He works as a video game store clerk. Oh. Or, or as uh, as Richard says in your book, 
uh, forgotten and now working in games retail. Uh, damn it. So. Okay. For shame. For I shame. know. That's, I wasn't even right. I thought it would be one of those two answers. It wasn't even <laughs> one of those two answers. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Okay. Let's get back on track with round four. Mm -hmm. Poetry time. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay. So lyrics <laughs> to a, a Sega song mm -hmm. on the Dreamcast. Mm. A game on the Dreamcast. Okay, so listen closely <clears throat> as I recite this. Mm -hmm. I want to fly high so I can reach the highest of all the heavens. Somebody will be waiting for me, so I have got to fly higher. Got to keep going. Everything is a great new challenge for me. I will believe in myself. This is the only start for me. <laughs> it, it feels like your, a song... Your face right now is priceless. Yeah. It feels like a song that was originally in Japanese and you've translated into English. Nope. Really? Okay. Nope. Uh, nope. <laughs> the lyrics give that give that quality, <laughs> like that anime, <laughs> that anime opening theme tune quality where it's just nonsensical English. Um... <laughs> Ah, oh, so Radio Sega listeners are going to be like, "What the hell? Why don't you know this?" Um, so I, it can't be Metropolis Street Racer, I don't think, because Richard Jacks um, commissioned all the songs for that, and I feel like the songs in those the the songs in that game have lyrics that make sense. Um, oh, that's a, that's a bold claim there. It's a, it is a bold claim. But at, at least I don't think that they sound like an anime opening theme song. Um, then, so I don't think it's that. It will be that now. I bet you it's going to be that. Um, <laughs> it, feels, it feels like a Sonic song, but I can't. It feels like a Sonic song. There's, it feel. I don't know why, but it feels like there are very few Dreamcast games that have songs with lyrics. I don't know why. That's just how it comes across. Just stuff like Samba and MSR and Sonic and a couple of other ones. Just the radio. Oh, damn it! Stop proving uh, me wrong. I, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> um, uh... <laughs> Now my now my my thing is you probably wouldn't have said jet, said Jet Set Radio if that was the answer, so I'm going to cancel <laughs> that out as well. Um, oh, I, I love how you overthink this. I, I'm overthinking. Everyone does. Everyone does. <laughs> um, you give me way too much credit than much more credit than I deserve. Like I'm some sort of mastermind, evil mastermind. Yeah, I mean, you are an evil mastermind. Yeah, right. um, that is that is true. Uh, I I feel like this is one I'm going to get wrong again. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm I'm starting to think that I will not hit ten points. But uh, my, my <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm gonna and, and I feel like maybe I should just go with this answer for all of the questions going forward, okay. just okay. to see if I hit it. My answer is Sonic Adventure Two. Okay, are you sure? No, but we'll just go with that one. <laughs> So for for uh, the samba samba song you said Sonic Adventure right yeah and for this one you say Sonic Adventure two yeah yeah so next time we'll next say Sonic one. Adventure three I mean we'll just co-op no, games Sonic Shuffle games. Sonic oh yeah Sonic Shuffle maybe yeah yeah uh, okay so final answer Sonic Adventure two yeah okay I shouldn't but I will give you the two points okay. okay? Because um, this song is in both Sonic Adventure and Sonic Adventure 2. This is the theme song of, of Tales. Okay. However, the lyrics are slightly changed uh, in, the, um, in, the, in the Sonic Adventure 2 version. Okay. So it's, there, there is no place in the Sonic Adventure 2 version where the lyrics are exactly like in the order that I recited them. But they right. are there. Okay. Somewhere. So yeah. technically, you are correct okay. in two points. Yeah. I actually was reciting the, the lyrics to the Sonic Adventure version, but it's okay. basically the same. It's the same song, slightly altered. Sure. So well, thank you, for thank you for giving me the points. Yes, Sonic Adventure 1 will be my sense. answer for every question going forward. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Round five. So three points. Okay. Not bad. Mm -hmm. Six more to go. Yeah. Round five. Easy okay. or hard question? 
So sorry, we've got <laughs> so Easier we've got heart. Si- so, six attempts. Um, is it six attempts left to get yes seven yes, points yes, essentially. Yes, two of them are song related, by the which way, which will be always two points. Yes, uh, let's let's try for another hard one. Let's see what we we'll another see hard we've got. one. Yeah. Okay, so let's look into my uh, library of hard questions. Okay. Hmm. Are you familiar with? Sonic Mania. Um, not particularly. I have played a little bit of it. Uh, let's let's see. I guess how familiar I am with it. Okay. What is the name of the mysterious and powerful gemstone that appears in both Sonic Mania and Sonic Forces, and can be used to distort time and space? Uh... So, if you've played Sonic Mania, you know that that's why. Sonic travels through you know, different zones of previous games, right? Things get distorted. Mm-hmm. There's a, a gemstone yeah. that causes that. So, okay. So I, I, I don't know the answer to this, but I'm going to try and logic my way through it. So uh, the gemstones in Sonic are emeralds, uh, generally chaos emeralds. Um, Agreed. But I imagine that they will not be chaos emeralds here that would be silly um so they probably give it a different uh, although that could just be me uh, making things more difficult than, no because they, they, then you would have said that they were in other games as well this is very specific to these two games so and i will uh, tell you that there are chaos emeralds in the game you can okay. collect them as well as okay. usual this is something different okay so <laughs> I'm trying to logic this, but logicing it isn't going to work because I'm thinking, oh, well, then it must be an emerald. Oh, but then if there are chaos emeralds in there, then maybe they don't call it an emerald. Maybe it's a crystal or something. Um, So... Do you remember maybe the color or or something? No, no, no. So I'm... uh, Okay. So maybe if you if you're mentioning yeah, that's a hint if that if that's a color so I'm guessing that rather than an emerald maybe it's like a ruby or something um, like it's a different colored gemstone um, I'm I'm gonna think it is it is a Sonic game it's not gonna have the most overwrought name ever for something so like something like the 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 time crystal or the time ruby or the time something or to do with time distortion time travel. Uh, yeah, this is just a complete guess, and it's going to be a terrible one. I'm just going to go with the Time Ruby. So your answer is the Time Ruby? Yes, it is. Yes, with that intonation. With, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes. Yep. Okay. The Time Ruby It is a ruby, actually. <laughs> It, it is, in fact, a ruby. Okay. But it's the Phantom Ruby. <laughs> it's the Phantom Ruby. Do you know what? that? I'm, so, I'm, I know I didn't get the points, but I'm quite happy that I saw a ruby. Okay. You, you got there very... I mean, it was your hint close, that got me there, close. to be fair. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it's, it's uh, uh, the Phantom Ruby. Okay. okay, okay. Round six, another okay. song. Last song that you'll hear. Okay during this challenge okay 10 yeah. second long clip let's see if you can get this mm-hmm. dreamcast right so yeah what a way. and by the way english lyrics just saying <laughs> not to prove you wrong or anything but um Oh my goodness! Uh... This is really, really hard. Yeah. Um, it, it, it. I mean, I, I've played Nights into Dreams, and obviously, it's not on the Dreamcast, but it instantly gave me Nights into Dreams vibes. Um, for some reason, it probably has it, just the just the floaty, sleepy nature of it. Um, mm-hmm. it. Oh my goodness! I I will give you a hint. Yeah. It's on your book, although it's not one of the like featured or games that are in any retrospectives or anything. 
but it's 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 here. Okay. I it's think it's in the the library section, right? Yeah, there. I can already picture it, and I think I know what it is. Um, I uh, I, it's it's a game that Lewis loves. I'm. This is what if if I'm right in thinking this is what it is. I think it is a Japanese exclusive game. Um, that is my thought. It's not going to be now. I know it's not. Um, do you know f- the name of the game, or it's it's it begins with an N, and my or my, anything uh, that can even if you can't give me the name, something that lets me know that you know what you're talking about. Yeah, the the name the name is kind of it's kind of. I mean, I have I literally have my book next to me, and I could literally open it and find the name, but I don't want to <laughs> cheat. I have my hands on my head. Um, you do, you do. Uh, I can attest to that. So if to. you if you just tell me something that's you know, it's something, lets it's me like know that something in in dreams. There is a dream. There is dreams in the title. I'm pretty sure, like Ari mm-hmm. and dreams or something. But it's it's like it, it, the cover looks like paper craft, and uh, it begins with an N, and uh, it's on the tip of my tongue, and I can't think of it. It's something in in dreams or into dreams or um, it probably isn't that, but it begins with an N, and that's okay. all I can. That's all, unless I open the book and find it. That's I I know I what you're. I know what you mean. Yeah, I know the the exact game that you mean. Yeah. Uh, you mean Apple Tail? That's freaking it. Yeah, an Apple yes? Tail. Yes. Apple Tail. That's what I'm thinking. Is it is it the the correct answer though? Probably not. Is that? Your answer. No. I mean, Napple Tail is my answer. That's the only thing I can think that it would okay. be. Okay. This song is called Dreams in a Pie. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> Napple Tail. Oh. Arzia in Daydream is the That's name of the game. It. I knew it had it's Dream a Japanese in a song exclusive. One. Yes. It was a game uh, uh, developed entirely, entirely by women. That's everyone. It, yeah. In the team where there were, I need to play it. Women. Lewis, Lewis, absolutely like raves yes, about the been, game. It's he been loves translated, it. and yeah. and I've I've I haven't completed it, but it's now I can understand it. So, yeah. not that it makes much sense anyway, but no, but yeah, I <laughs> but mean, it's much better than playing with without any kind of knowledge of what's going on. Absolutely, whatsoever. I'm I'm I will have to just I just need to take a second to like deeply apologize to Lewis for not getting the name. Like it just was <laughs> right in the front of my head and I couldn't pick it out. I'm so sorry Lewis. I will forever remember the name Napple Tail now. It will never leave my head. <laughs> yes. And uh I, I don't remember the name of the protagonist, but it's not Arzia or because you think Napple Tail Arzia in Daydream. Mm. That's not the name of the girl. No. Uh, I can't remember right now, but it's got nothing to do with it. Okay. Fair enough. Good job. Two points. So that means that's you have five now. Okay. We're halfway there mm-hmm. with four rounds to go. Whew. Question. Easy or hard? So let me just <clears throat> let me just break this down. So I I'm gonna have one two point question left. Yes. So if I get that right, two actually. The last one, the last one, is always a hard question. Okay. I see. I see. Okay. Okay. After those, I'm for this one. I'm going to give myself an easy. I'm going to try an easy question because I can still get there. Okay. Okay. (sighs) Easy question. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, mm-hmm. in World of Illusion, do you know World of Illusion? Is this the Mickey Mouse game? Yes, mm-hmm. with Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck. Mm-hmm. Okay. How do Mickey and Donald attack their enemies? Um, as in the weapon they use. Yeah. What, what do they do to attack enemies? What's the, the action they perform? Like Sonic jumps and spin attacks right what do these two do see there is a mickey mouse game that's got a very prominent thing where he holds a paintbrush and he kind of like swipes a paintbrush i don't know if this is this one i'm being honest i've never played either of these games um Mm -hmm. but because i know do you that. remember? Do you remember seeing anything 
with with Mickey and Donald together. Like, so this is a game you can play solo or co-op. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's actually a pretty good and fun co-op game because you really have to help each other at okay. points in, so, in the game. I think Any, the paintbrush thing was, that you see, the yeah, paintbrush thing was Castle of Illusion, right? I think that was Castle of I think so. That was Castle of Illusion. There's another. That's yeah. another game, which that's, I think uh, that's what I'm thinking of. I think Mickey alone. Yes, which is what I'm thinking of. I believe so. This one then, which I actually don't know at all. Um, I would assume if it's co-op and if there's a specific action that they are performing, I would imagine they're probably using one another to attack enemies. So probably swinging each other like a, like a weapon. I will. I will. But remember, you can play solo as well. So if well, you do that, you you maybe, and by solo I mean with only one of the characters on right. screen. Okay, well then that makes okay. no sense, right? And um, and think about the the name of the game, World of Illusion. World, of and that's all about. That's all the the the, the hints that I can give you. No, that is fine. Uh, I'm, the, I'm all the, out of hints. Yeah, this is a game I have no idea about. Um, I'm struggling. Perfectly honest, I'm very struggling. Um, the hints don't help. Illusion. The only thing I can think of is like some. I mean, it's not really an attack, but it, or, or a, 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 it's like a cloak or something or a mirror. It's a video game, so don't I really know, but it does overthink it. I, I, well, I'm an overthinker. I, I can't help it. <laughs> um, my 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 mind is a blank. But if there, so, th- this is an action they perform to attack enemies, right? So the action maybe is I'm going to say swing in a cape. That's all I got. Final answer, right? It's going to have to be, yeah. <laughs> Seriously? What point? Yes. What the hell? You use your cape, your magic cloak or whatever, and you... <laughs> That. You cover like enemies with it, and it they turn into flowers. Okay, okay. <laughs> or birds, or whatever. Gen- genuinely, the... never seen this game before in my life. So there it's you go. a great, great little Mega Drive game that you should try. I mean, it's 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 very easy nowadays by by, and very very simple by today's standards. But I uh, really enjoyed this as a kid. Nice, very nice co op game. Yeah. Okay. Good job. One point. Well Yay. done. Well done. So that's six. That makes it six. Nice. Um, last last song related question okay. round. Poetry time. Mm. <clears throat> Don't know what to do. Don't know where to go. How can I find you? Who's to know? I gotta know where you are. No matter how near or far. I'll never get over you. So, okay. <laughs> this is an interesting one. And and my, my gut instinct is Metropolis Street Racer. So, like every answer I've given, apart from Ferrari, I am not confident in the slightest. <laughs> um, but it, it feels like there is like a female vocal almost sort of dancey track in Metropolis Street Racer. And it kind of, I, I, I don't remember the lyrics to any of the songs in Metropolis Street Racer, but it feels like a vocal from that. Mm-hmm. I think I'm wrong already. Um, it's probably, it's, it's probably an RPG. Love the confidence. Yeah. The confidence. It's probably an yeah. RPG or a game that I've just never played. Um, but I, it was probably Jet Set Radio, isn't it? Um, but I'm going <laughs> to, <laughs> or, or an apple tail or, an apple. or yeah. a sonic adventure if it's like yeah i should say sonic adventure um yes. <laughs> if it's sonic adventure i will jump through the screen and murder you uh but i'm gonna go for <laughs> metropolis street racer yes oh, it is already. i can still believe uh, was Richard it like a dancey Jakes track and Dev- Davis. no no this one is not the no. dancey track ah. there are several there there are several uh vocal tracks in the metropolis street racer cool. and a uh, few that have uh, tj davis as yeah. the vocalist yeah uh, the one that you're remembering or thinking about is probably am i only dreaming right. which is probably the better known one uh this is more like a ballad okay 
softer ballad. Nice. I, I do love this one. Very good job. Very good job. So that <sighs> means, wait, one, three, five, six, eight points Oof. with two rounds to go. Nice. So okay. as I uh, told you before, mm -hmm. question 10 it will be a hard one. Yep. So question nine is your last chance for a, an easy one, or you can just try to close this off right now with a hard question. And I mean, you're done. That makes sense, right? Because if I don't get it right, I've still got one more chance. Whereas if I need you easy, I have to get the next one right. That's true. So let's go. Yeah, Either good. way. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, I could get both wrong and then I, you know, <laughs> Yeah, that's still that's still entirely <laughs> possible at this point, given my track record. Um, I think let's go for a hard question. Yeah. Okay. 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 This is an interesting one. Okay. One that I don't ask often. Okay. In Sonic Adventure. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> of course, it's Sonic Adventure. Go on. In Sonic Adventure, collecting rings is Sonic. Mm -hmm. In. Cassinopolis, mm -hmm. Cassinopolis, whatever, and depositing them in the vault yeah. serves two purposes. Uh -huh. One is the one that we all know, which is to gain access to a platform and end the stage, right? Because yeah. you have the Chaos Emerald up there. What's the other? Why do you collect rings as Sonic in Cassinopolis? What, what else happens? <sighs> So I fairly famously am not that keen on Sonic Adventure. Um, <gasps> so I like How Sonic Adventure too. Uh, Sonic Adventure I'm not as keen on. Um, I remember I remember this stage, and I remember it mostly for the pinball. Okay, yeah, because um, that's what basically what you do there with yeah. with Sonic, right? Yeah, apart from going around the lobby and collecting rings and stuff, of course. Yeah, but there are, there aren't many rings there, so you need no. to collect rings so you go to the. The, the pinball. pinball stages, yeah. yeah. Or you get you can shower as well. You can shower. I do remember that. Yeah, that's true. Um, because you know Sonic is dirty. He <laughs> needs to shower after looking yes. at all of those women at the pool. Uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he needs to clean off. <laughs> um. Okay, so you put them into exit. So the second thing. So I'm get. Uh, I, I'm not sure. You must need to get some. It must be some kind of power up. It, uh, I I will tell you this. It doesn't impact uh, the story in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, okay. and you—if you're not paying attention, you're—you don't even notice it. Although, and this is a very long hint. Uh, although, uh, you know that you play in this same stage as another character, right? Um, I can't remember who, but yeah. Uh, and if in in that playthrough, mm -hmm. you do notice that. You do notice what... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's all I... Yeah, that, that's not helped me at all, but thank you. Okay. Um... <laughs> good, good, good. I'm glad. Um, now, the characters you can play as are Amy... Big the cat, uh, the robot, which I can never remember the name for. Yes. Tails. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't remember if there's anybody else. I think that's it. And Knuckles. And Knuckles. Oh, I forgot Knuckles was in this one. Of course he is. Um, I'd imagine. So I'm again, I'm logicking this. I'm logicking it. Um, I'd imagine that it's probably Amy the robot or Big the cat that you probably play as. And it's probably something weird. So... I feel like I'm gonna. I feel like I want to guess a fish, um, like an animal of some kind, like that you free from putting enough coins in. Um, and I feel like a fish would be the weird thing for them to do, but it's probably not that. Um, you had a little bit of a laugh, which probably means that that's a really silly idea and is not the right. No, no, thing. no, no. I, I'm, I'm. Remember, I'm talking about something that you do as Sonic. Yeah. It doesn't really impact uh, your playthrough as Sonic in, in like a, a meaningful way. Right. Um, but you do uh, see it as another character. I, uh, I can't, it's just, yeah. 
think about the stage. Think about the, the, that stage. Yeah. Right. That that like the the floor of the casino. Is there anything that stands out? And that's all I've got. And I I will need an answer. Yeah. No. Um. I feel. I so the floor of the casino. I I don't know why, but I think there's some kind of coin design on the floor. So all I all I've got, and it's probably it will not be right. Is you get a coin for trading in rings. Final answer. Yeah, it could yeah. be. It, it could be. It's not though, is it? But <laughs> that's my final answer. <laughs> <laughs> but it could be. It could be. Is it though? It is not. Of course no. it's not. Why would no. it be? No. <laughs> So you have to uh, collect. I don't remember right now, but it's like a massive number of of, uh, of rings, mm -hmm. uh, more than the ones that you need to get up the ledge and, and collect the emerald mm -hmm. to complete the stage. But more than that, um, and you help build a golden sonic statue in the center of the lobby of the main floor, <sighs> and that's something you actually see because when you start the the stage as Sonic, you don't have the the statue there, right? Uh, but then if you collect those that insane amount of rings and deposit them in the the, the vault, you can see that statue. But as right. Knuckles, as Knuckles. Mm -hmm which is the other character, you actually do see the statue in the middle of right. uh, okay. the floor. And you can break it, actually. You can punch the, the foot, I think, uh, okay. and it breaks. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know so, that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you learn something you know, every day. That's, that's, that's seg education. That's what you're here for. It, it is. Yeah. Seg education. Yeah. Okay, which means it's all down to this last question. <sighs> okay, sure. Uh, sure. Why not? Okay. <laughs> for the Sega Lodge seal of approval for glory, mm -hmm. Andrew Dickinson. Yeah. Hard question. Mm -hmm. I've been asking this 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 season because I, I think it's a nice question. In the promotional material, for which game did Sega claim that RPG has changed? Okay, okay. Um, so ooh, ooh, he's confident. Oh, I'm not confident, like, but there's only like, ooh, one. Okay, okay. So Sega haven't released a huge amount of RPGs unless they're like uh, unless we're looking at um, third party ones, but they wouldn't be advertising that themselves. I'm gonna guess it's not a Dreamcast one because there were only a couple that they released on the Dreamcast, and I don't think they would have claimed this for Skies of Arcadia. Um, I think they would have gone with the swashbuckling piratey theme and not claiming that RPGs have changed. Watch it be Skies of Arcadia now. Um, I think that the one that makes the most sense so there's a there's a good few on the Saturn. I'm guessing that that is an English one, not something translated from Japanese. I, you probably can't answer that, but I'm guessing that is an actual English RPG has changed. So More. Sega, yeah. Sega, it's a Sega developed game. Yeah. Obviously, because yeah. that's why they're promoting it. And what it, what even e is a, a, an RPG, right, Andrew? Yeah. So but it has changed, apparently. It's changed. And it, it changed with this game. Right. So the only thing that I can think of now. Okay. This is either this is either going to be Sonic Adventure. Sonic Adventure. No, um, I mean it could be. My goodness, can you imagine if it was? Um, then I. I mean, in in a way, in a way, in a way, there was elements of that Sonic Adventure. Yes, yeah, there were elements. Um, so, if it's if it's something prior to Saturn, I'm sorry. If it's Skies of Arcadia, I'm sorry. I think it's Panzer Dragoon Saga. RPG has changed. Yeah. Why did it change with Panzer Dragon Saga? Because it was such a weird RPG and it's based on a, uh, a a dragon flying shooting game, which also contains dragon flying and shooting. So it is an interesting and odd RPG. So that's I'm gonna say I'm gonna say that. I, I think it's wrong. I've thought that all of my answers apart from Ferrari have been wrong even when they've been right. 
Um, but oh, I'm really, no. re- I'm hoping beyond hope that it's Panzer Dragoon Saga so I can make it to 10 and not completely embarrass myself. Uh, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna wait. That is my final answer. Panzer Dragoon Saga. I haven't even asked that. So you're you're just locking it in. I'm locking it in. Right I just now. I just need this to be over. I need to know. <laughs> I need to know. I just need this to be over. <laughs> oh god. Um yes. So Panzer Dragoon Saga. Indeed a very different mm. in, in some ways RPG. Yeah. What is what even is an RPG anyway, Andrew Dickinson? I don't know. Mm. Sometimes an RPG is a game that lets you run around fighting people, looking for sailors. Oh, it's Shenmue. Shenmue. It's no. Shenmue. Oh no. <laughs> But it wasn't an RPG. It was free. It was full reactive It's free, exactly. So RPG has changed. Oh, no. Maybe maybe into free. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> that is embarrassing. <laughs> I'm embarrassed of myself. I, I learned about this uh, very recently. Mm-hmm. And I've been asking this question a- every chance I get this season. And, and yeah. Uh, some people get it, but but mm. it's it's hard. It's hard because not many people think of our, uh, uh, of Shenmue as an RPG, although mm. it started life as yeah. a Saturn RPG, right? So yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I blame the marketing people for this. Uh, I way. mean, yes, yeah. I'm sure Sega <laughs> do too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> out, out of interest, I mean, I've obviously I don't have the seal of approval, and I failed. How many people oh, fail? You, How many people fail this? Oh, I mean, it's uh, it's really hard. So everything is hard here. So is that your don't, polite? Don't is that your polite way of saying not many people? No, fail no, no. I, I think I think uh, wh- whoever doesn't fail, uh, most people who don't fail get it right at the exact last moment. Okay, usually, which is so why I, did I don't last think time. we've. Yes, we. I don't think we've ever gotten a, a perfect score. At least on one of these, like generic Sonic, uh, uh, Sega, Sega uh, yeah. challenges. Yeah. If it's like a specific one for something, you know, that people are really, 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 really knowledgeable about, maybe. Yeah. But a, a generic Sega one is harder. So, don't worry. Okay. But you still get the Sega Launch seal of approval because you're you're amazing. Oh, amazing. thank you. You deserve it. I still have the last yeah. one, so I can just reuse that one. To be honest, okay, okay. <laughs> but this time it's a little bit different, so oh. you'll you'll want this one as well. Okay, interesting. Okay, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll let you know more when we're done. Okay. okay. So, uh, Andrew, um, we've talked about the book. Mm-hmm. Uh, one thing that I wanted to know, and for people who maybe. Uh, weren't able to back the the Kickstarter at that uh, moment in time. Mm-hmm. Are there any chances of getting the book some other way? Um, so I do still. I'm I'm running low. I'm I'm continually recounting my stock. Uh, I do have a few, and when I say a few, I mean very few copies, physical copies left. So people can, if if you follow me on Twitter, you can drop me a DM. Um, and I can see if I have any copies left for you. Um, however, there will be I, um, Dreamcast Year One um, and the DCY Zine, which I created as well. They are both available digitally. Um, I have like a a store. I'll have to give you a link to it. It's, I don't mm-hmm. often share it weirdly, um, but I'll give you a link so you can pop it in the show notes. Um, but I will be adding Dreamcast Year Two to that once I finish fulfillment because um, I want all of the backers to get their stuff first before I kind of let anybody else take a look at it. So there will be a yeah. way to get it digitally. Um, but if you want a physical copy, yeah, contact me as soon as you can because they are going very fast. I didn't print a huge amount, um, but I did print a bit more than I needed. So yeah, let me know. Okay, okay. So, And we'll have the link to your Twitter uh, account as well cool. in the show notes. So do get in touch with Andrew. It's well worth it. Really, uh, I'm waiting for my physical copy, but for, judging from the digital one that I already have, uh, it's well worth it. Uh, and you mentioned that you've started working for um, Lost in Cult. Yep. Right. So would you like to tell us a little bit more about that project? Or yeah. projects, Yeah. probably. Um, plural. 
So yeah, it's uh, so Lost in Cult is a uh, it's kind of a design studio publisher type thing. Started off just with with Lock On, uh, but now we do all sorts of video and game books. Um, and our whole deal is that we're physical. So we do have digital stuff. We release digital versions of some of our products, but everything is physical that we do. We like physical media, um, so we want to make actual physical books uh, and things like that and all, and we're not even just books anymore we have a whole range of things we do books we do uh, vinyl soundtracks now uh, we've just uh, we, we are working with um, Citizen Sleeper uh, the developer of Citizen Sleeper to create a book for them which is uh, Citizen Sleeper Design Works uh, which goes through the, the design process of the creation of Citizen Sleeper lots of interviews lots of um, exclusive artwork and we're also releasing a vinyl alongside that uh, and, and also um, a tabletop RPG, uh, which is something new that we're doing. But yeah, we're we're all about um, physical media and the preservation of video game culture. So we have Lock On, which is our kind of flagship product, which is our video game journal, which is hundreds of pages full of articles from all sorts of writers all over the world, um, all about video games in various forms and guises, and tons of artwork, all original artwork, both from developers about their own games and also uh, artists, real artists, not AI artists, um, who create uh, bespoke <laughs> artwork uh, just for us. Um, mm-hmm. And then we've expanded into things like a handheld history, which is a kind of coffee table book, which looks at the history of handheld gaming consoles, which we did in com- in collaboration with Retro Dodo. Um, yep. And that's having a retail version published in September. So you can actually buy that on Amazon, um, pre-order it. And um, yeah, we do design works. We've just announced our um, Everything Not Saved initiative, uh, which is us trying to help with video game preservation through all sorts of means, including more books, of course, uh, but also exhibitions and um, uh, things like that. And hopefully just donating to other existing preservation charities, too. So, yeah, it's, it's a huge it's a huge endeavor. Uh, it's grown over the past couple of years since we started it quite significantly. And we do all sorts of stuff. Um, and also on top of the tabletop RPG, we um, announced a, a card game recently. We're doing a trivia card game uh, with Digino you know Gaming, uh, who are a big YouTube channel. Um, and that's going to be really exciting. I'm actually working on that at the moment with them, um, coming up with the rules nice. and the cards. So uh, that's going to be really exciting. Um, so, yeah, we we just yeah. do a lot of stuff. Um, but I think it's uh, Lock On's the big thing. I think if, if anybody's going to check anything out, definitely go and check out Lock On. Um, mm-hmm because it's just it's just full of amazing stuff by a huge amount of amazing people so yeah yeah uh, is there a specific issue of lock on that you would recommend for people who are you know dreamcast fans oh, um fans? <laughs> maybe um so yeah <laughs> uh yeah i kind of i kind of hinted at it earlier so um volume three uh, we call them volumes. We're pretentious slightly, uh, and we and we also <laughs> we also do triple digits. So it's volume zero zero three, because um, we are hoping to eventually get into triple digits. Of course, mm-hmm. um, take mm-hmm. us a while. We did work out if we got into triple digits at the rate we're going, I would be in my sixties. So <laughs> I, <laughs> we'd have to be going for quite some time to hit triple digits. <laughs> but I could probably just about squeeze out issue one hundred before I had to retire. Um, <laughs> so it should be fine. Um, but yes, yeah, so uh, volume 003, um, I worked with a bunch of people to create uh, a huge Dreamcast section within that. So it's a 230-page um, journal, and the first 100 or so pages are dedicated to the Dreamcast. We've got so mm-hmm. much stuff in there. It's, it's such an incredible volume. There is um, a piece about Shemu by um, I think it's James Brown from Shemu Dojo. Um, there is a piece all about um, Frederick Rennell's um, games on the Dreamcast um, by Jörg Tittel, who is the creator of uh, The Last Worker and yep. the C Smash VRS, uh, which is the uh, Cosmic Smash successor coming to VR. Um, mm-hmm. We have all sorts of things. Tom Charnock from the Dreamcast Junkyard wrote a cool piece about Dreamcast peripherals, um, rare and, un- and unreleased ones. Uh, we had an, an interview with Tetsuya Mizuguchi about Res, um, which was done by uh, Simon Cox, who was the old editor in chief of the uh, official American Dreamcast magazine, mm-hmm. um, and he told the story of how Res was named, which is a very interesting story indeed. Um, so yeah, there's there's just a ton of stuff in there that's that's really incredible. Um, some fascinating stories. It's not it's not like my books where I go through the history. It is just pulling out certain games and certain things and looking at them in an interesting way. 
So if you really, if you're a fan of the Dreamcast, if you've got my books, if you happen to have the ROM book about the Dreamcast, uh, this will give you something completely new. It's 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 not like those things at all. And there's lots of bespoke artwork as well, which is very nice. Yeah, yeah. And it's really, really, really nice. Yeah. Uh, really high quality as well. So yes. definitely recommended, right? Yeah. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah. And uh, yeah, this, if, if you don't, if, if you're not that keen on Dreamcast, which if you're listening to this, you probably are. But if you happen not to be, there's also a lot of other stuff in there, lots of other games to read about. So, And if you're not. <laughs> it's the wrong crowd. If I was speaking to somebody else, sure. But no, 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 no. no, no. But if, and if you're not, what the hell are you doing with your life? I mean. <laughs> that is true. I, that is true. I mean, not to shame anyone, but shame on you. I know. I, I even um, managed, I, I'm so I, I love Dreamcast so much. I even got Dreamcast into a handheld history, and the Dreamcast is not a handheld console, but I got the VMU in there. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> but there's, I mean, this is the Sega Lounge. There's a whole section about Sega, so obviously the the, the Game Gear. Uh, a brief mention of the Nomad because it's just a Genesis in handheld form. Yes, but, um, yes. <laughs> but the, the game gear is, is mentioned. There's a really, there's a really nice article in there about um, mm -hmm. somebody who um, endeavored to fix up an old game gear and the memories that brought back for them. So that was, that's a really interesting piece. Okay. So yeah, well, well worth a look as well. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. I know that this is something that people who are like Dreamcast enthusiasts and, and fans are always looking forward to. We have, a lot of content, a lot of actual games, new games mm. coming to the Dreamcast, which is very exciting. What do you see, um, or how do you see the future of the Dreamcast? Right, because it's it's weird. We're talking mm. about the future of a dead console, which yeah. is not dead at all. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> I mean, we 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 have a saying in the Dreamcast junkyard, and that is the Dreamcast is a current gen console. It is absolutely still there at the front lines. Sure, it doesn't have as many releases as modern consoles. Absolutely not. But it does get releases. It's still getting brand new games, even games that are exclusive for the Dreamcast in some respects, mm -hmm. in some mm -hmm. in some cases. Um, I think that the future is really bright because not only are there more games coming, but there's also a lot more um, kind of ways to play those games uh, mm -hmm. with mods and things like that. We've got the VM2 to look forward to, which is going to be a really interesting way to play the VMU and actually have an, a rechargeable battery and not have to replace those CMOS um, batteries anymore, which is not CMOS, it's CR... Uh, CR 2036? Or 2032, maybe? 32? Yeah, 2032. Um, yes. CMOS is the internal battery, of course. Um, yes. So, yes. Uh, yeah, so there's that. Um, there's obviously there's new mods coming in, in so you can um, kind of load games by SD card because that's people's preferred ways. The, the drives are dying all the time. Those drives mm -hmm. are not going to yeah. last forever, unfortunately. So we need to find ways to, to preserve. So I think, um, and, and lots of different ways to play online. Like we've got the Dream Pi, which is fantastic, but there are chatterings of other ways that you can connect to the internet coming for the dreamcast at some point in the future um mm. so yeah the the future is that there is a few i mean there is a future for for it and i think that as long as people still support it and buy these indie games that come out um and you know look to mod their consoles and make them compatible with their modern their modern televisions and stuff like that it's it's a really bright future and not only that but we're looking at games that aren't just 2d anymore you know there was a long time yes. where the dreamcast uh, the, the best people could do was a 2d game because they just lacked the technology or skill with the system to be able to create a 3d game and now we're seeing things like arcade racing legends and um, harley quest which is recently funded on kickstarter and we're seeing those games come through and you know yes they're not like the 3d that you'd expect from shenmue or something like that i think that is not really ever going to happen um, because you'd need the support of sega in order to achieve those kind of graphics um <laughs> but we can get more towards a uh yeah a, a more 3d games and i think that when you th think of the dreamcast you think of those 3d games and having more of those in the indie scene will be excellent um i think people um m m i think it's luke benstead i believe who's created the simulant engine um I apologies if i'm incorrect in that please do correct me somebody i'm sure somebody will if i'm incorrect i think it's luke um the simulator engine which is a 3d engine that has incredible potential um uh, for people to create new games so yeah the the, the future is just incredible the, the, you can do so much with this console it's one of the uh it's one of the it's one of the it, no it's the first retro console you can create 
a huge amount of different variety of games in both 2D and 3D and play them online even today. Yeah. So it, it's just an absolute powerhouse of a console. And why Sega dropped it? Well, I mean, there are lots of reasons why Sega dropped lots it, but they reasons, should. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but they're probably regretting it now, maybe. Re- re- read year two. Re- read year two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it read tells the story yeah. over there. It tells the story. So, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I didn't want to interrupt, but yes, Luke. Uh, did create the simulant engine. Yes, you're good. right. I'm usually bad with Correct. names, but I'm glad I remembered that one. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, very good, Andrew. So I have I have one last question. Mm. I usually ask people uh, if you could add blast processing to anything in the world, what would it be and why? But I, I already asked you, you that did. question. Yeah, yeah. So I don't want to repeat myself, uh, and I want to ask a different question. So okay. it's the Dreamcast. Mm-hmm. So... What do you dream about these days, Andrew Dickinson? <laughs> That's a dangerous question. I could say anything. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, are we talking literal dreams or are we talking my, my, my dreams for the future? You can interpret this any way you want. I, will, I, I, will... I never asked this question, so it's, yeah. it's you're the first and probably the last person to ever answer this on the show. I so mean, it's it, up to you. Yeah, if I tell you my actual dreams, I'll definitely be the last person you ask that question to. Um, <laughs> but my, my dreams for the future, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna interpret it that way. Uh, my dreams for the future are that um, that I release year three uh, okay. because I would like to complete the trilogy um and um that we continue doing really amazing stuff on the dream pad the dream pad uh the dream pod and the dreamcast junkyard because we've had some incredible interviews on the dream pod recently and we've got some really great articles we've got some amazing people working for it so i just want that to go from strength to strength so i think those are my those are my two dreams they're my my sega dreams um for the for the uh for the incoming future okay okay very good so uh in i gather from that uh slip there mm. that you're working on the dream pad a portable <laughs> version of the dreamcast can you imagine that would be incredible <laughs> like like a, a a real like a tablet like there is one have you seen cast. the one you can buy from um, aliexpress the, yeah but that's that's the, the like a yeah so it's one. like a controller like with chunky, a screen on top yeah yeah it's a chunky it's one it's like 400 I, I, pounds <laughs> yes i mean like a, like a, even if it were 400 pounds but can you imagine like a, like a thin like ipad like yeah sleek yeah uh dreamcast that would be nice that would be that would be very good i'm not working on that i wish i was uh yeah so you mean you're you are working on it okay okay (laughs) (laughs) okay andrew uh thank you very much for coming back on the show always a pleasure to to talk to you to to have you on the show as well you've contributed to the the show several times in the past as well so i do really appreciate it very much uh and We'll have the links to, uh, you know, to your store, digital store, mm-hmm. right? For for year two and year one, if people want to get that in that form. But remember, show notes for uh, the Twitter handle and DM Andrew for a physical yes. copy. Yes. It's well worth it. Well worth it. <laughs> Do that. Andrew, thank you very much. And we'll talk to you when... The campaign for year three starts. Yeah. Well, I have to come back now because I need to I need to redeem myself and get a second win. I can't leave it on one win, one loss. That's just not it's that's not, true. Can't yeah, let's let's break this tie. Yes. Not not that I'm happy for you to have lost today. No. Yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, Andrew. Thank Bye-bye. you. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you again to Andrew Dickinson for coming back to the show. You're a legend, my friend, and I can't wait to get my hands on Dreamcast Year 2 when it arrives in the mail. Check out the show notes for information on how to get digital versions of both Year 1, right now, and Year 2 when Andrew makes it available. Thank you very much for listening to this episode of the Sega Lounge. Nine years all about Sega, and we're still going, so follow us on your podcast app of choice so you don't miss future episodes, and please take some time to leave us a positive review so we can reach even more Sega fans. The doors are closing, we're done for the week, 
but the Sega Lounge returns soon. Until then, take care of yourselves and enjoy some Sega gaming. Oh, and check out Terra Player. Bye bye The Sega Lounge, hosted by me, KC, and part of Radio Sega's network of live shows and podcasts. Theme song and incidental music by OSC. Find them at opusciencecollective.bandcamp.com. Got any suggestions? Drop me an email to podcast at thesegalounge.com. Find us at The Sega Lounge on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. You can find previous episodes of the show by going to thesegalounge.com and wherever fine podcasts are downloaded. Mixed on Productions podcast.